Well, okay, my friends, I'm sure you know who this Dr. Michio Kaku is. And he is in the, you know, quantum realm, which is exactly where I work. And he says you can ask him anything. So I'm going to ask him about my work. And I also want to talk about Bill Nye, who is another science celebrity guy. You know, basically that's what they are now. They don't come on, they're celebrities and they, they make appearances. But at least he says you can ask him anything. Now, is that true? Because I am going <laughs> to, and I did on his page here. So let's see what happens. Okay, my friends, this is uh, disturbing to say the least. This is Bill Nye talking about the James Webb Telescope and how they can tell all these things and about how far things are and all this due to this telescope. So they are basing every single thing in physics and science now that the, on the speed of light cannot slow down. It is just one speed, never changes. Now listen, and you see all the debris in here, and I'm going to show you fields that are in space. And when anything hits a field, it pushes and shoves and slows down. And I will show you some fields that exist in space and they will slow down the particles coming through. So the red shift is the light slowing down. It's not that it's coming the exact same speed forever. Now listen. These galaxies are unbelievably far, over 13 billion light years away from the farthest corners of the universe. The speed of light is constant. That's how they discovered that they're 13 billion or however many billion year, years of light years away. It's just it, literally insane. Look at this dust in here. Look at the, the glow that the atmosphere is glowing. And the atmosphere only glows when it's being pushed against. And when it's being pushed against, it slows down the thing that's pushing against it. Light is slowing down. Okay, so why do I say that the particles will slow down in light? And I will show you, right? they can speed up and slow down. Now, what particles are we talking about? These are the tiniest particles they can find. This is from Fermilab. They call that a fixed particle, and that's a point particle. And here they are right here. These are these exact same particles, only these are light. Light is a photon. We can actually split these particles and turn them into sterile muons, which is the black one, and electron showers. And here it is done right here. And this is what they are trying to do there. They're trying to create these muons, the black balls, all by themselves, and the electron showers. We did it. That's fission. That's fusion. I think this should be looked at by Fermilab and CERN, and uh, they have turned a blind eye to this. And it's because of these science celebrities. So, I mean, here it is right here. This is the same particles. This is CERN. I mean, uh, Fermilab. And these are the same exact particles. These are the smallest particles they can possibly find. And they're right. They are the smallest ones that exist. And here's what they are. The extended particle, which is the black one, is fixed. It's always the same size, a black ball. And it's hard. And the other ones are ha uh, the other ones have a mathematical abstraction with zero size. They, they, they're, they're glowy. They can get big. They can get small. And that I can prove quite absolutely. We started out with light. All right, here's light. These are the particles of light. They come in as neutrinos. They're not completely formed light yet. They're stacking up on themselves. Then they create the photon. Then they break at the Venturi into the two bits and pieces, which is right here. Here's the Venturi. Speeding up light. So it speeds up, it slows down. So it's speeding up, bam, it hits the Venturi, explodes, and we get the fission, we get the fusion, and here we get the electron showers. And I believe that's, they claim it's billions to trillions of volts. Now, what does every particle of light, this is nothing more than light. Photo, uh, you know, laser light is supposed to be light, same speed, uh, all light does the same. Well, this is pulsed red laser. There's a particle in here and a field, a big field that surrounds it. It's a particle wave. It comes through here as a wave. And ev all of these particles in front of it have to be pushed out of the way. Their fields push against this field. That's what slows light down. Now, this is, uh, here's a blue slowing down. You, you see it? Came in fast and it's slowing down. And it's not going to speed back up again. They don't speed back. There's no reason for them to speed back up. What's going to speed them back up? 
they know this now. It's it's a hundred percent completely proven that this light slows down and it stays slowed down. We did all the, as I said. Here's the particle. That's the photon, and it comes in every color. Well, we had, we use three different colors, but they're all the same. Here's a green, same thing. You see, and these are the neutrinos before they turn into the photon. So I would like to be in this discussion with all these science celebrities. I mean, they're all they all have run away from me now. Fermi Lab. Well, you know, I know I'm not a celebrity or anything, but I think I should be able to talk to somebody like Bill Nye or any of these scientists. I have light research. This is light. It's the smallest elementary particles that exist. I'm sure when we did this, and the problem is we did it for very, very little money. That's the issue. They're looking for big mysteries that they can walk around in circles for for decades and decades and decades, which they have done quite successfully. All right, this is, this is really kind of interesting. They have done a new experiment and it cast doubt on the nucleus because the nucleus is not right whatsoever. They took cold helium, injected electrons in it, and the nucleus of the helium expanded. The nucleus, that, that's not supposed to happen. <laughs> I know why it happens. Electron flood theory predicts it quite nicely. They have missed a ton of electrons. It's called electron flood theory. Now, I missed the date on this. This was a week or so ago. But um, he says you can ask him anything. So I am asking, Dr. Kaku, please, will you engage with me? Are we, I said, hello, sir. We use lasers and a venturi to accelerate and see the neutrinos and photons. Then they split into sterile muons and electron showers. My question is, is this fission and fusion? If we split them and then they come back together, that's the definition. Okay, so I presented this to Dr. Kaku, and I hope he will respond. I said we did exactly what Fermilab was trying to do, but we did it basically on a desktop instead of these huge colliders. This is the pic from Don Lincoln at Fermilab, right up at the top. And Don asks for questions, but he calls me a tinfoil hat person, refuses to discuss anything with me. I found the particles using light and protons. I mean, uh, not protons, just light. So I said, I hope you are true to your words, because Don Lincoln is not. He will not respond whatsoever. And this is what I am showing is Don Lincoln's particles. Here, the family lab was from his article about it, and here they are right here. Now, we accelerated the light here, and it split here. So I say that's fission and fusion. Now, I asked him also about that. Is this fission and fusion? So I said, we use light, and it appeared to accelerate and divide. The light divided apart. Any comments on that? I think it's fission and fusion. What say you? And here it is right down here. We use lasers and eventually it accelerate and see the neutrinos, photons, then they split into sterile muons, electron showers. Can you please contact me? I think I understand the nuclear, the nucleus, which is not the way they think it is, not at all. And it is a dipole, not a big positive ball. My question is, is this fission and fusion? That right there is what they call sterile muons coming from muon electron neutrino stuck together to black and white ball and this turns into the shower the black goes sterile. That is fission when here it breaks apart that's fusion when it comes back together. I see no other alternative. Now how will Dr. Kaku see it? Will he even contact me? This is what you know he's at he somebody asked him when are you coming back to LA and he answered he says oh I'll be back there don't worry. So maybe he'll answer me. I have no idea. No idea whatsoever. But I have never had any response from anyone that claims to be a physicist and want answers and questions. And I present questions, I get no responses. So let's see if the Dr. Kaku is actually true to his word. Now, I'm also trying to talk with um, Bill Nye, the science guy, talking about they can see with the Webb telescope 100 billion years in the past, 100 billion light years. And uh, I say that's not true. 
light slows down. It does not say the same speed. And he says it does. It never slows down. That's just not correct. And it's been proven not correct. And they still keep saying that's correct. It's, I can't understand how they can get away with doing that. And spending all our money to do all these research and everything, which is based on a, a, a flawed principle. I, I, I'm sure he knows, Dr. Kaku knows that you can slow light down. No question about it. I'll, well, let me show you. Well, here it is right here. That one's slowing down. The other one's speeding up. This is, see, this is slowing down. You see how it's real fast here? It's slowing down. This one here is the normal speed, and here it is speeding up. So we can speed them up. We can slow them down. We can see the actual photons right there. Those are the photons, the black and white balls. And those are the same ones that they see, the black and white balls, but they're just in a shower of, of debris at Fermilab. I could show them actually developing, which I did, and I showed them, they're green or red, and blue. they're all exactly what they're looking for. And um, without having anybody to talk to, I'm just walking around in circles. And we might be able to use this. I don't see why we can't use it. Electron showers are supposed to be staggering amounts of electricity there. Because all we use taking is the white, we're separating the white from the black. If you could separate the white, that's your electricity. That's where electricity comes. The black just pulls the electricity to it. The black is gravity. Did you ever consider this? The Earth must be loaded with a ton of extra black particles because it is gravity. Black is gravity. The black part sucks the white part down to it. Electricity, right to ground. Lightning, right to ground. Static, right to ground. Why? Why would the white part, which is the electric, electricity part, that's the part that does the work, pew, right to ground? Well, because ground consists of more dark matter than it does of the bouncy white matter that we can see. The dark matter is underneath. You never see the dark matter because it's always surrounded by the white particles. They're the ones that bounce back at you. The dark matter <laughs> sucks the white particles down to them so you never can see them. And that's what gravity is. The Earth has to be saturated with the dark particles which want the white particles. That's why everything goes right to ground. Electricity, static, lightning, bada boom. Okay, I, I am not looking for celebrity whatsoever. All I want to do is hope to get some free energy. This is the light accelerating. Here you divide the black from the white. The white is the only part that has the energy. The black sucks the energy back to it. They divide it here, they came back here. If we can harvest that white only, we got it. I can't see how you can possibly miss. And we can, we can certainly do that. You need some thin film tr solar collectors here, right? Positioned right here before the black attaches. D because the white is desperately, desperately seeking that black. Black <laughs> sucks it. The earth is saturated with dark matter. Electricity, boom, right to ground. Lightning, boom, right to ground. Static, boom, right to ground. Why? Because it is the white portion and it's seeking the black portion. Earth is a black ground. Now, what that means is it has to have additional black matter in it. And my definition of that changes everything and I mean everything and if we can do this we could ha put something like this in a device about this size and with this kind of energy from one single ray, um, laser interaction into a solar collector here we could have thousands in here and I don't see why that right there shouldn't power a car or a house or whatever you want it to power and it's handheld it's portable it's not dangerous we're only using light it divides and comes back together so fast <laughs> there's nothing you can do it's not going to hurt you these are the particles that are light light does not damage you the problem with nuclear radiation is they're big big chunks they're big balls what we have is like this. We're using like one of these. And that hits you, it doesn't hardly do anything. It just bounces off you mostly. But it, here it's so fast it comes back together, it's never going to get to hit anybody. What they do when they splash theirs, they throw off chunks like this. Now that hits you, you're in trouble. And there's a ton of them coming off. It's called 
nuclear radiation and it's parts of nucleus is big parts we started with light we can't get, we, they're never going to get big so we can't get hurt this is what i want i want somebody to talk to me about something that may help us not i don't care about i, I got enough money to get me by for the rest of my life i have you know i'm not rich but i don't care about money it doesn't do a big thing for me and i don't care about celebrity either i just want my research to be seen because it's important. I'm going against literally everybody because once they get entrenched as the leader, as the celebrity, that you they just say what they say and everybody, woo, everybody just woos. And I don't woo anymore. I woo, that's what I do now. I say, wow, how did you come up with that? How could they possibly think that light never slows down? I can show light speeding up, slowing down, dividing. I can show the particles. I can show the neutrinos. <laughs> and nobody will talk to a Roger. So let's see if these guys are true to their word. It would be the first ones.